Uh, Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar has a vision. The vision is concerning him. But let's not make the mistake that others make in assuming that it was only for him. In the book of, Pro uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon said, that which was is that which shall be. There is no new thing under the sun. What is, what is one of the best ways of discerning what is going to happen in the future? Look what happened in the past. Because he did it once, he'll do it again. God speaketh once, yea, twice, in a dream and a vision. And this is what we're dealing with in the book of Daniel. So it happened once. It had a partial fulfillment in the book of Daniel in Nebuchadnezzar's day. It will have a complete, perfect fulfillment in the latter days. And, of, and I'm not going to go over this whole vision that Nebuchadnezzar had. You read this on your own. But I want you to notice that in this vision that Nebuchadnezzar has, uh, let's see if I can find this. Let's start in verse 15. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Now, this vision typically was for Nebuchadnezzar, who went, who went out, stood out on his balcony, beheld his kingdom. His heart was just full of his own pride. Look at what I have done, for that ought to be a lesson to us. And God smote him, and he literally... I mean, his hair grew. I mean, just, uh, just ugly things all over his body. They had to put him out literally in the field of the palace. And he ate grass like an ox for how long? Seven years. Can you think of something in the Bible prophetically that happens for seven years? Think about it. Okay? I'm not going to go into that detail tonight, but I just want you to think about what the Bible is trying to tell you about the future that's going to happen on this planet. And then at the end of seven years, uh, Nebuchadnezzar is, is lifted back up again. But notice what he has said in verse 16. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a what heart be given him? Think of who a beast is. Revelation 13, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. This beast heart that was given to Nebuchadnezzar basically turned it literally, in this time, turned Nebuchadnezzar into an animal for seven years. His senses had gone. His, his humanity was gone from him for seven years. He was as a beast. Do you remember how, um, I think it was Peter who described the false prophets of the last days. And he said, these as natural brute what? Think about it. They had the spirit of the beast, and they were operating under the spirit of the beast. And I heard uh, Brother Mike Hutzel give an excellent, excellent um, teaching on this. He said the difference between humans and beasts has to do with control, temperance. He said if you were in your house in the, at night, and you heard an intruder coming in your house, and you went and stood in a doorway down the hall, and you were waiting for the intruder to come by you so you could shoot him or club him if you wanted to spare his life. And as that intruder went by, he stepped on your toes. Do you have the ability to not scream out? We have control over our impulses. Say amen. That's what makes us human. God give us the power of choice. That's why he put two trees in the midst of the garden. And God said, choose. He set two trees before Israel, one called Jesus and one called Barabbas. And God said to Israel, choose. Okay? Now, is there a race tonight? Okay. Oh, well, we better hurry then. Okay? So, <laughs> anyway, uh, where's I going with that? Anyway, if your dog was sitting in that same doorway and the intruder came down the hall, stepped on his toe... Does the dog have the ability to control his impulses? This would be not evolution, but de-evolution. And I think that humanity, in this great awakening that, they're that is going to take place, this paradigm shift that we talked about is going to happen, I believe that a spirit of a beast is going to take over mankind. Are you with me? That's what I think is going to happen. Job chapter 10, verse 14. 
Job chapter 10, verse 14. See, I'm making you look at the, the Bible tonight instead of me putting it up on the screen. I want you to notice, I like to do word studies in the Bible. And so I just studied Revelation 13, and he calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. How many? Six. God has a pattern. He has an order. He's teaching you something. He's teaching you to count. So we can chase down the number six in the scriptures and get an understanding of why God said this. By the way, that Walmart thing last night where it says live better, the symbol is, guess how many points it has? Okay? He causes us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a what? Everybody say mark. A mark in their right hand or in their forehead, so that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So let's study the mark in the scriptures. Job chapter 10, verse 14. If I sin, then thou markest me. What is the mark associated with? Right out of, right out of the bat here. Sin. How many of y'all know what sin is? Say amen. Okay, you're good at it. Okay? If I sin, thou markest me. And by the way, the beast is called the man of what? Sin. He is, he is the sum total of all of mankind's sinfulness. If you were to pile it all up, it would be this man of sin. This earth is only going to get what they have asked for. Four, through their iniquities. Psalm 130, verse 3. Aren't you glad I put all these in order? <coughs> Psalm 130, verse 3. If thou, Lord, shouldest do what? Mark iniquities. O Lord, who shall stand? Now, I, I love themes in the Bible because they're so simple. Think of things in the Bible that stand. Paul said, having done all to stand, to withstand, to stand, stand fast. Standing is the opposite of falling. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Dagon was stood in front of the Ark of the Covenant, but what happened to him? He fell. How art thou standing, O Lucifer? No. How art thou fallen, O Lucifer? The dragon took his tail and took one-third of the stars, and they did what? They fell to the earth. There is that day shall not come except a what? A stand first? A falling away first. So think of, boy, I could, I'm going to get mean. I, I, I get mean sometimes. These guys walk up to people. I've got the, I've got the Holy Ghost on me. Boom! And they hit somebody in the head. And what do they do? Do they stand? I'll tell you my testimony. By the grace of God, m many years ago, I was hungry for what I thought God wanted to give me in my life. And I went to a Pentecostal church. And I went forward at the end. And they came by. And I, here I am. God, God, I'll take anything, anything you want to give me. I'll do. And I was. I was being honest with God. And so they come by. Bam. And there's somebody behind me going. And I didn't fall. And they come by me again. Come on. Johnny Bench back there. And I didn't fall.